especially uh, Congressman Shaka Fatah, for whom this has been uh, a life passion. Thank you to Shaka Fatah for your leadership, especially on uh, the issues of brain research that have the potential to change so many lives. Welcome to A Capital Idea. This is the best show on television. I'm the host, Shaka Fatah. I represent, uh, I think, the best state in the union in the United States Congress. Now, through my years of public service, I've been focused on pursuing strategies that improve the life chances of young people. We literally have helped tens of millions of young people through a variety of programs and projects that I have uh, helped lead in our country. I've worked particularly now on focusing on successful completion through college and providing opportunities to support mentoring programs nationwide. Now, I have a special role for my team in the Congress. I lead the appropriations effort that funds our youth mentoring programs through the Department of Justice. Now, I'm seeking to bring additional funds to bear through legislation that I've recently introduced. It's called the America Focus Act, and you'll get a chance to learn more about that if you go to my website. But it's, the plan is to assist tens of millions of Americans through youth mentoring and STEM education, medical research and innovation, and making our communities safer. Now joining us today to talk about the impact of this legislation we will have on mentoring programs is Charles Pearson, President and CEO of Big Brothers Big Sisters of America. Let me welcome everyone uh, to this edition of Capital Idea and let me welcome our guest who knows uh, uh, the subject matter so very well but also knows Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. Um, Charles Pearson, you run the Big Brothers, Big Sisters organization, which has been headquartered in Philadelphia for uh, 100 years. I mean, it's a major commitment, uh, but it is not a Philadelphia organization. You're helping young people all across the country. How many states are you in? Uh, Congressman Patel, we are in all 50 states. We have 339 chapters of Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and we're also in 11 foreign countries. Well, it is an amazing contribution that's made, and. Um, by your organization, the bigs, the littles, uh, and uh, it was just a few years ago where we uh, got a chance to interact with some of your local team um, around some of the challenges and the need to expand and some of the creative things that were being done. And we're going to talk a little bit about Correct. that uh, today because you've developed not just the, the approach that I was familiar with as a child, because I was a little and I had a big, uh, but that you've got this program where young people are taken to the workplace, right. uh, where there's more of a, um, a kind of a group mentoring model that allows you to reach more and more young people. And that was uh, created and uh, launched in southeastern Pennsylvania Absolutely. first, That's right. but now has become a pretty exciting uh, addition in other places in the country. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Through our, our national partner Comcast and NBC, NBC Universal, uh, we launched a program called Beyond School Walls, which has just taken off like wildfire. It, it's a program where we're actually busing children from their school into the workplace. And we still, it's our, our traditional model of one-to-one -one mentoring. It happens often in a group context, but you have one big, one little in a relationship. And what you're doing is you're lowering the threshold of a volunteer's time in terms of not taking them away from the office. You're bringing the kids to them, which is certainly valuable to the volunteer. And then from the child's perspective, it gets them out of their comfort zone and puts them in a, an unfamiliar place, the workspace, which is fantastic. Well, it's exciting. And I know it's been very successful in southeastern Pennsylvania uh, because I've heard from so many people who have participated uh, in it. but. When we got together with your team, there was some concern about creating more resources. We've worked right. in my role on the Appropriations Committee to really uh, move to double the federal investment in youth mentoring. And your organization has benefited, as many of the other youth mentoring groups have benefited, uh, in terms of millions of dollars of additional resources. But the White House, in its examination of the youth mentoring needs in the country, said that there, there are well over 14 million young people who are still not yet being reached. That's so right. whether it's the Boys and Girls Clubs or Big Brothers, Big Sisters or some of the other great programs, there's still a lot more young people to reach. Right. And what I've tried to do, and we put together a meeting with the Attorney General and all of these uh, national youth mentoring groups uh, about you know a year or so ago to talk through 
how we might think about going forward in a much more sustained way. And I'm so happy that we now have legislation. We have uh, hundreds of groups that have come out in support of it, everyone from the National Association of Counties uh, up through the uh, First T, PGA of America, and a whole host of groups. Uh, and we're getting great response here on the Hill. But talk to me about what the opportunity is for you to do more if you have more resources to do it well with. thank you and i want to thank you for being such a great champion of our youth and of mentoring for the last decade plus uh you've been just tremendous and uh the, the, the need is so great uh, as you mentioned 14 million children it's it's hard to get to all of those youth and what we've seen in the last several years since the 2008 economic decline is everybody is working hard to keep pace with where you were and to have new resources to go and serve an increasing demand and a growing population, it puts tremendous pressure on the entire organization of all youth and health and human service organizations, and particularly those in the youth development space. And so to come out with your focus legislation around an opportunity for resources and revenues, that's hard to say anything bad of why you would not want to do that uh, with money that is not a takeaway from anybody. It's, it's, a, it's a resource and an opportunity that will allow us to serve kids and grow and, and change lives and, and really change the trajectory of America. And that's, that's what it's about and, and we, we embrace that. Our, currently we've got 30 to 40,000 at any one given day children across America, 20 to 30 to 40,000 kids on a waiting list waiting to be matched with a big brother, big sister. This funding, this legislation would change that. Well, I know that in the Philadelphia area with your local organization, um, which is being led by Marcus uh, Allen, a he's great doing a, a great job, uh, but that there was a backlog That's and right. there is a backlog and we need to get more people involved. But we also need to, as a country, understand that my point is, is that we, we're competing against billion plus populated countries. That's right like China and India, Absolutely. if we want to continue to lead the world, and we do, we can't afford to leave any of these young people in the shadows. We've we got to get all of these young people uh, to be able to live up to their God-given potential. To, to your point, Congressman, there are more honor students, honor students in the nation of China than we, ha than we have in our entire school system. So if we don't step up and see that the, the economic and competitive shift of, of intelligence, we've got your, your points right on. We've, every one of our kids is, is vital to the future and the success of this country. We can't leave any behind. Well, it was um, many years ago now, because I've been here 10 terms, uh, that we introduced the gear up legislation. And uh, it was supported by uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters back then, along with hundreds of other youth serving organizations and has been uh, wildly successful across the country, all right. 50 states, helping young people get ready for college. Okay. But I think that the, the beauty of youth mentoring is that it reaches young people well before there's any discussion about whether they're going to college or not. I, I, I've got a perfect story for that. Just as your experience as a former little brother, my most recent little brother, Rod Derrick, I got matched with him in the third grade. And I remember going to his school and interacting with him and asking what he wanted to do in his future. And college was not in his vocabulary in third grade. It just wasn't there. I mean, I remember looking for it and searching for it and in a home that so many of us grow up in where that's an expectation from day one, it just wasn't there. And I'm proud to tell you as we fast forward now, 11 to 12 years later, Rod Derrick is a sophomore in college today. He's majoring in criminal justice. His sister is a freshman going to the same school, Wiley College, uh, the great debaters. Wiley that's College Wiley in Texas? College, that's right. Oh, look, I, I, that is a college <laughs> that has got a historic that's right. uh, role. And, um, and Danzel Washington is a big supporter of youth mentoring uh, right. across our country. Uh, did such a wonderful job with highlighting the historic role. A absolutely. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that. And I'm very proud of Rod Derrick, and, and to your very point, though, it, that was not part of the conversation, and now a decade later, to see him not just going to college, but thriving and loving every moment of that experience. Uh, he's, he's, to me, uh, f you know, I, I get such inspiration from him every day because he's the future of our country, and he's such an amazing young man, and, and it's just such a great blessing to have been part of his life and for his life to have been part of mine. And uh, that is what this is all about. Your legislation, the FOCUS Act, Gear Up, all of this is about funding resources to help children and change their lives for the better forever. Big Brothers Big Sisters is proud to do, do that across America. Well, I want you to talk a little bit about how 
the, um, the federal funding you have received has helped, but also about all of the great corporate support. You got locally in my town, Absolutely. you know, Saxby Coffee, and you got That's Comcast right. has been a major supporter. But talk about so that uh, our viewers can know that the federal government plays an important role in supporting youth mentoring now. That's and what right. we're talking about is just building on that right. so that we can ramp up even more aggressively in this area. To your, your very comment, every dollar that is received from public funding, we leverage at a minimum of four, but in most cases it's 10, in some cases even 15 to one. So those dollars that come in, they are the catalyst to help us initiate programs and then the, the private sector gets behind them, the corporations, private entities, foundations, they get behind them and that's what sustains them into the future and so uh, you're, you're spot on and uh, everybody can be involved. I mean it, it, whether it's uh, as a volunteer giving of your time uh, or whether it is a, is a private donor that says you know I don't feel like I have the right time to, to volunteer today, but I can write a check to invest in somebody else that can do that in the life of this young person. And what we've been able to show and demonstrate, for every thousand dollars, we're able to change a life for the better forever. Uh, we can find a big brother, big sister, recruit them, train them, match them, safely support them, and then provide a year of program services and activities, and it's really exciting. Because in truth, th this is a program that's not really staff dependent. It, I mean, staff is important, but it's really volunteer dependent. It is. You know, and there are many programs like this. I was out at the um, National Championships for FIRST Robotics, and mm -hmm. they had a uh, stadium full of 40,000 young people who had competed in this uh, national competition around robotics. I think there was one paid staff person in the whole in the whole stadium. That's fantastic. Uh, and uh, the point is, is that a lot of the work that needs to be done, we do need people to volunteer. We, we do. need them to be involved. But our government has to make a decision also to support the infrastructure that's necessary. Absolutely. Because you also have to supervise, hold accountable, make sure that everything is going in the right direction. And what we need to do is to, um, I'm convinced, is to have this national array of organizations that are quality organizations that are focused on getting this work done. And let's create the revenue stream that's needed so that we can have uh, the full blessings of this future generation of young people benefit our country. And so th if, talk to us about how volunteers get involved. If they want to become engaged with uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. But by contacting Big Brothers, Big Sisters, I think some people may, all of us think incrementally, and we think, you know, how would I find the extra time to do this? And it's not about finding extra time. It's really about thinking, how can I include a child in the life I'm already living? Because that's really what they need to see. They need to be included in things that, they need to see you as a man, as a husband, as a father, you know, as a role model in the community. That's what kids need to see. And they don't need to see you do anything extra. They just need to see you include them in what you, what you're, the life you're living now. And when you think of it that way, to think, you know, could I take, have taken a child uh, two to four times this last month out to dinner with me, to the grocery store, working in the yard, it's really not hard to do. And what the kids will remember is not the things that you've spent money on for them to do, it's that time. Well, I know. My fraternity has uh, partnered with your organization uh, to get more African-American men, and now we have a group of uh, college fraternities that's right. working together, and that's been a great uh, focus. I'd like you to spend a minute talking about that, and also uh, the Amachi program, which has uh, been something that was nurtured and developed, uh, the focus on the children yes. of those who are uh, incarcerated. Absolutely. This is a group of young people uh, that get a uh, focus level of attention. So spend a minute on that. So two things. Uh, the, the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. Um, the best, the first. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they are truly amazing. Uh, uh, President Tillman is uh, big brother himself. Uh, he, he walks the talk and uh, the, the Kappas and the Omegas have uh, joined the, the call and, and the challenge and all are partnering with us in very significant ways and we're thankful for that. The Amachi program that you're referencing, um, that came about as a result of some amazing people, Joe Tierney, John DeUlio, Reverend Dr. Wilson Good, um, all came together and started a, a movement around mentoring children who had incarcerated parents. Um, 
a U.S. Senate report from 2000 demonstrates that uh, children that have a parent in prison are 70% likely to follow their parent to prison without intervention. And Big Brothers Big Sisters coming in with a mentoring program focused on this, this population of children, we've been able to demonstrate over the course of many years, less than 2% of these kids will follow their parents to prison when you intervene. And that's mm -hmm. just, you think about that, that change, that return on investment from 70% to 2%, we need more resources to change this, this trajectory. Well, this is what we want to focus in on. We want to take things that work. We want to expand them, scale them up. You know, we have, unfortunately, in our country, more people in prison than any other country on the face of the earth, over two million. Right. Their children should not follow in that path right. if we can intervene. And Amachi is a great opportunity to look at that, the Dream Academy. There are other uh, ways that we can make a difference. And I want to thank you for the work that you're doing, the great organization that you're leading. This legislation, which is uh, H.R. 3580, and people can go to my website uh, and take a look at it, is garnering support uh, far and wide throughout our country. Uh, some of the most respected organizations in our nation have come out for it. This is uh, not what we call in our business a messaging bill. We're not trying to send a message. This is a bill we intend to pass into law. Uh, when we passed Gear Up, it, there was a Republican-controlled House and Senate. I think that there are plenty of Republicans to support this uh, approach because our kids are not Democrats or Republicans. That's right. They are our country's That's future. Right. And I want to thank you for your work. Thank you for being a champion. Let's keep working together. Absolutely, right. sir. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Your life is not defined by what happens to you. You define your life by how you decide to respond to things life throws at you. That is the power of choice. I saw life as harsh and cold and bleak. I was alone, empty and angry. I became a product of my environment, getting bad grades, fighting in school, and getting in trouble with the law. A language barrier that seemed impossible to overcome. An economic instability that seemed to follow my family every step of the way. That was my childhood. At any age, wondering if your mother's life is in danger or if you'll ever see each other again is agonizing. And for me, it was nearly unbearable. My life nearly ended before it began. I was unplanned and inconvenient. I wondered what i done to deserve to be abandoned. This is the reality for so many of the children Boys and Girls Clubs help every day, mending our lives from utter brokenness. Many teens like myself believe that the club has not only shaped our lives, but assisted us in defining who we are. They saw someone who was lost, someone who had forgotten how to feel, someone who couldn't remember what it was possibly like to be loved, they saw me. I've had the opportunity to be supported, taught, and inspired by remarkable people in a remarkable place. Never before had I felt such a sense of security and genuine love for complete strangers as I had that first week. It was at the club that I began to flourish. The club fed my spirit, helped me believe that a bright future wasn't only possible, it was probable. See, the club isn't just a place where you go to hang out and have fun. But it's a place much more than that. It's a place where your dreams and my dreams become a reality. The Youth of the Year program is the highest honor a Boys and Girls Club member can receive. It highlights academic success, community involvement, and all your life obstacles and, and how the Boys and Girls Club has truly impacted your life. This is a remarkable and extraordinary group of young teens, leaders of this nation, and what a fabulous group of six young Boys and Girls Club members that represent our regions and military for this year's 2013-2014 Youth of the Year. They are truly inspirational. I've wanted to do this for a very long time and so it's like my dreams coming true, you know, being in DC, it's definitely a lifetime opportunity and I'm, I'm just really happy to be here. 
I'm so excited to showcase what the Boys and Girls Club has done in my life, but it's not just about me, it's about so many other youth that the Boys and Girls Club has impacted, and we have so many opportunities, and the rest of the kids are so wonderful. Um, I love every single one of them. I feel like I just made five brand new best friends. They are all so amazing. They're awesome. Like, I hope that we stay friends forever. They're just really amazing people from all different perspectives, all different regions. It's awesome. The bonds I've made with these people, I will hold for the rest of my life, and they're just so they're, they're just so great. It is it is a great honor uh, for us to, as Tupperware Brands, to sponsor this Youth of the Year program. Uh, but at the same time as individuals for us to uh, fund some scholarships and do other things as well and probably the best collateral benefit of that is us getting to know these kids. Uh, it's incredible every time I have the opportunity to come back and be a part of some Boys and Girls Club event I'm always so impressed with the kids. I either get emotional or attached in some way but it's incredible to see them taking advantage of this incredible organization. If you spend time with these kids, if you give them someone they can trust, someone they can believe in, you'll turn lives around. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2013-2014 National Youth of the Year is Kiana Noland from Boys and Girls Clubs of South Central Kansas. Before I begin, I would like to thank Rick and Susan Goings for all they do for the Boys and Girls Club of America and for all they do for the Youth of the Year program. I would also like to um, thank Tupperware for everything they've done and everyone else who contributed to this amazing week. I'm just happy that I've got to meet so many amazing kids and I also get to represent the Boys and Girls Club because it's had a significant impact on my life. In life, you'll have trials and you'll have tribulations. You'll have obstacles that will come your way, but you can never give up. You have to keep reaching for the stars. You have to keep reaching for your dreams. And when it feels like it's impossible, you just have to keep going. You have to persevere. Never give up. Always push through. There's always going to be bumps in the road, but you can't let the bumps in the road hold you back. You just have to prosper and just let it springboard you into where you want to be in life. Just be yourself. Try your best. Don't let any obstacle get in your way. Just hurdle them. If you do fail, it's only because something better is coming your way. You learn from it, you grow from it, you become a better person from it. You take that and then you succeed somewhere else. Believe in yourself and definitely if you need help, ask for it. Because if you don't ask for it, no one will know that you need it. From the Boys and Girls Club, I got the help I needed. I got the structure in my life that I needed. And I got responsibilities given to me. Everything's designed there to help you succeed. And so attending the Boys and Girls Club is seriously the, the key to a, a successful future. Introducing now another guest for our show is Kiana Nolan. Mentoring helps young people because it guarantees that there's a person who cares for them and is committed to helping them navigate their way uh, down life's highway through school and career choices and other challenges in their lives. There are over 5,000 mentoring programs in the United States and an estimated 3 million young people uh, helped by a number of these different programs. One such young person is Kiana Nolan. The Boys and Girls Clubs of America has named her, and you'll find out why, the 2013 Young Person of the Year, or Youth of the Year. She's a freshman at Howard. She's a future lawyer. She's from a place called Wichita, Kansas. I flew into Wichita, and it was just all, it's all flat. But it was a wonderful time. You had a wonderful governor, uh, who's now our Secretary of Health, uh, Kathleen Sebelius, but welcome. Tell us about how youth mentoring and how the Boys and Girls Clubs of America intervened and helped you move uh, to where you are now, a successful college student. 
Well, I started at the Boys and Girls Club at the age of five. Um, my mother was a single mom and I was adopted into a single parent home. So at that time, my mom just needed help raising a child. She had to work, so she just needed a place for me to go. Um, but she didn't know that it would have such a tremendous impact on my well-being and character. And since I've been a member, I've been involved in numerous extracurricular activities. Um, but most importantly, staff have reached out to me and they became my family. They taught me um, right from wrong. They taught me different things about how to navigate through school and through my career choices. So the Boys and Girls Club has been everything that I could ever hope for and they've um, truly shaped the person that I am today. Well you know I was on the board of our local Boys and Girls Club back home in Philadelphia, uh, a number of our centers through the Crime Prevention Association. But when you get to be youth of a year, it's a competition in which you, you, you are it for the entire country you represent. So you know just tell me what what this uh, honor means and what you're doing in terms of this role about trying to inspire other people to get involved with the Boys and Girls Club. Well, Youth of the Year is the highest honor that a club member could receive. Um, so now I repre uh, represent the four million youth which the Boys and Girls Club serves nationwide and across military bases. So I have a platform and my platform is Smart Girls, which is an organization that helps girls um, learn how to carry themselves appropriately. Um, but more importantly, being Youth of the Year for me is a time to represent for my Boys and Girls Club, the place that has helped me throughout life because I think that when um, people instill things into you, it's important that you give it back. So this is my time to tell everyone, thank you for all that you've taught me. Thank you for everything that you've done for me. Now this is me paying it forward. Well, also, can we let them in on the secret? What about the car? Oh yes, I did get a car, but I've got so many cool things. I got to meet um, President Barack Obama in the Oval Office, and okay. I really enjoyed that. We'll get that. back to the president in a minute. <laughs> okay. Tell us about the car. Just, just well, um, yes, I do get a um, new car from Toyota. Um, they give us a new car, so right. that's pretty cool. In our See, I'm excited about that, right? <laughs> I think that's it's great. Exciting. You know, meeting the president. Now, when I was at the dinner, we had Denzel Washington. We had LeBron James. I mean, there are so many people who support the Boys and Girls Club, and it's because of you. It's because they see young people like you and they know with a little bit of help, you're gonna be more successful than any of us have ever been in our lives. And so it's such a pleasure to get a chance to meet you, for you to be an inspiration for our country and for young people. And I know you're at Howard University. I know you're gonna to go to hopefully University of Pennsylvania Law <laughs> School. We got a great law school in Philadelphia uh, and uh, we'd love to have you. So I wanna wish you the best. Jim um, Collins, a friend of mine at Toyota, right? That's why I had to get, you know, to talk about yes. the car because when they decided to give the car, I thought it really just elevated this whole uh, effort in terms of you for the year. You're gonna have a lot more competition in the future. So thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. All right, keep up the good work. Thank All you. Right. Thank you.